Hello, and welcome back to our creative videos. I'm Loretta Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And this week's project is going to be a quick tote bag using uh, the beach panel uh, that we did a couple of weeks ago for the um, beachy, quick beachy um, wall hanging. So when we did that, I did a, I did the little beach huts for that, and I was, I had three panels left over. And we thought, oh, well, this would be a great way of, of showing how to do a really simple tote bag. So if Pam pans down, we'll tell you how you're going to cut this out. So I took the panels and I cut two panels. So on one side of the bag, I'm going to have uh, the glamper. And I cut that to a 16 inch square. And then on the other side, we're gonna have the Beachy RV. And that is also a 16 inch square. So that's gonna give you the two sides outsides of your bag. In between, we're going to do a gusset. So we're gonna have this on the side and then we're gonna have down at the bottom and then on the other side. And so when you cut these pieces, we're gonna cut them four inches wide by 16 inches long, which is the same size as our block. So you're gonna cut three of those, three, 14, four by uh, 16. And the last thing for the outside of the bag is you're gonna cut two pieces of the same fabric as your, um, your gusset is going to be. It's going to be four inches by 24. We want two of them because we're going to do two handles. I've already prepped one of my handles ahead of time. So that was four by 24. Now, if they wanted longer handles, then they can go four by whatever, whatever. they would like. Yeah. All so right. if you like handles that are going to like really go over your shoulder, maybe up to about 36 inches long, it would Got work. It. All right. All right. So those are the pieces that we have for the outside of the bag. Now, once we have got those pieces established, what I would like to do is show you how to use a fusible fleece. So I've already fused the fleece on the back side of this. So when you cut out for your fusible fleece, you want exactly the same number of pieces as we have for the, the outside of the bag and for the gusset. So you're gonna cut two 16 inch squares of fleece three four by uh, 16 inch rectangles for the fleece. So if you've not used fusible fleece before, I love fusible fleece in uh, a tote bag because it makes the tote bag have body. Um, I hate it when I have a tote bag that, you know, you set it on the floor and it just collapses up into a ball. That's fine if you're like doing grocery stuff, that kind of thing, but I always like to have my tote bag kind of stand up. And so by using fusible fleece, uh, it's 45 inches wide, and on one side of it is nice and smooth, and on the other side it has little bumps. Those little bumps are the glue. And so you cut out the same pieces as we have for the outside of the bag. You take them over to the ironing board, and you're going to do a fusing motion. So we're going to take the iron, and we're going to go one Mississippi, two Mississippi. We're going to pick up the iron, move to another location, and press again rather than like an ironing action like you would be ironing on a shirt. So you're going to fuse those pieces and what you're going to see is it really does give you quite a bit of body. So here's a, here's a piece that is fused for the gusset and here's the handle piece which we haven't fused. So you can see there's a lot of difference in the fabric. All right, one last thing for you to cut. To line our bag, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut the same size shapes. So we're going to take, a, find a nice fabric, and this is, how cute is this fabric? Um, it's got like little swimsuits and oh, sunglasses that. on that. Bass. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. <laughs> little bags and everything. So for cutting your lining, you're going to cut two squares that are 16 inches, and you're going to cut three rectangles that are the 4 by 16. All right, so let's go ahead and put this bag together. So we're gonna start with our gussets. So grab your three gussets that have got the fusible fleece on them. We're gonna line up the edges and we're gonna sew them together on the short edge. Let me get my lining out of there. 
So we're gonna come in and we're gonna sew right along at the quarter inch seam. So you're doing a quarter inch seam on this? I am, and I've got a quarter inch foot on, so the foot that I have on the machine right now is the 97 foot, uh, so I'm just running it along the inside edge of the toe. Okay. All right, so we've got the first one done. We're gonna open it up, and now we're gonna come in and we're gonna do our second one. So we're gonna line that up. We're gonna do a quarter inch seam on it. So we now have our gusset, so you can see how the gusset is going yeah, to be working. Nice. Okay. So we're going to grab one side of our tote bag, and we're going to line up. And I always like to have the tote bag down uh, on the feed dog and the gusset on the top. I find it's a little easier for me to maneuver. So we're going to line it up so that it lines up on the top, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start stitching at a quarter inch seam. Now, with this particular panel, remember that <laughs> it would be really, really nice if the RV about was facing upright. So just kind of double check that before you uh, get going here. So we're going to be stitching along. And quarter inch seaming. So we get down to the bottom. Now what's going to happen is you're going to come to the bottom. Okay, you're going to come to that seam. You're going to let your needle sink. We're going to pick up the foot and we're going to rotate a 90 degree turn. We're going to pull the gusset so that we're pulling it all the way to the left. And then we're going to place our presser foot back Can down. you move your left hand? Yep, absolutely. Can I, if I, am I out of the way there? So I'm pulling it all the way to the left. So the seam that you sewed your gussets together is basically almost running right along the edge of the, the okay. back. Okay, we then take off and start down our bottom. And you could take and you could pin these together, that's fine. Um, for myself, I mean, it's a quick tote bag, so you know, at most I might come in and put a clip right at the end where the gusset and the corner come in. But if you sew for about three inches, line up, and then just keep sewing that way, we'll come to our corner. Once again, we've come to the seam in the gusset. Our needle sinks down. We pick up our foot. We rotate our bag about 90 degrees, and we pull that gusset seam so that it is almost straight out uh, lining up in that seam. Put our presser foot back down and off we go down the side seam. Awesome. So we come in, we cut our piece. So at this point, we've got our gusset. You can kind of see on the inside. Isn't that looking cute? It is. Is that sweet? All right. So we've got that one there. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our second piece, which also would be really nice if it was <laughs> wheels down. Fine. If you want to be that way, about that way, right? Be that way. All right. So we're going to line that up. and we're gonna start stitching. So once again, I have the gusset on the top of my bag, of the, the pattern. So off we go down. Get that bottom bit lined up. get to the seam, let our needle sink. Pick up the foot, rotate the bag 90 degrees, take that gusset seam and pull it directly out to the left, put our presser foot down, and then start stitching across the bottom. What I 
like about the fusible fleece is it does give it body, but it's not like interfacing where it makes it so incredibly stiff that it's hard to sew. It's still flexible enough that it rotates around underneath the needle super easy. So we're going to pivot our last side, okay, get that lined up. We're going to take it, we're going to line up that seam straight across, put our foot down, and sew the rest of the way. Do you think they would need to use a walking foot or an even feed foot for this? Um, because it's fused on, um, it really flows pretty easily. Okay. But there wouldn't be anything, uh, I wouldn't have anything against doing it with a walking foot. Um, I think the real, the big thing is, do you feel like you can uh, do a quarter inch seam with your walking foot? Got it. Some walking feet have a mark on them, mm -hmm. which would be super easy to follow. Uh, some walking feet do not. Got it. All right. Okay. So we are looking at our bag. Let me flip this around. We'll end up having to flip it back, but let's flip it around so you can see what's going on. So how cute. I like that turquoise. Is that. That's so sharp. That's coming along here. Yep. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to do our handles. So for the handle, I didn't, this is a quick tote bag, right? So I didn't want to have to go find a fast turn or that kind of thing or do a tube. So what you can do, if you want to do a one inch handle that has four layers of fabric, because you know, handles are always the things that start to wear out on a tote bag before the bag itself. Um, a super simple way of doing that is to take and fold your strip in half and press it then open it back out and press the two edges in and you will have a perfect one inch. It's a really so, big bias tape. So yeah, basically. So if you want to come around, yep. we'll press this and show them how that's done. So we're going to start out by folding it in half with the pretty sides facing out. We're going to press that fold so that we get a nice crisp fold running down that one side. That's going to be one side of your strip. Then we're going to take, we're going to open it up and we're going to take the raw edge and we're going to line it into the crease that we just made. So once again, pretty sides are facing out. We're, we're pressing wrong sides together. And don't burn your fingers. Yeah. Oh no. Okay, so there's our first one. So now we'll go ahead and we'll flip it around and we'll do the same thing on the other one. So the only trick is we kind of want to be pressing this fold without pressing that, unpressing the center fold. All right, so now we have both sides in. So we're going to fold it in half and we're going to give it one more press. And so we'll come in and this time we'll give it a really hard press. You should be kind of looking at your edges here. If they don't line up quite right, go ahead and wiggle them around until you get them lined up perfectly. And there is our handle. Woo -hoo. All right, back to the sewing machine. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to top stitch this because right now it'll open up. So I'm going to top stitch this at an eighth of an inch. Uh, you could change feet uh, and go to say like an edge stitching foot, but on this quarter inch foot, the inside part of the toe. So when I do a quarter of an inch, I'm on the outside part. Hold on just one second. Let it focus. Yep. All right. So on the outside of this foot is the quarter inch. Yep. On the inside of the toe is an eighth of an inch. Got it. So we're just going to leave for the two, two edges that we're doing here. We're just going to leave that. Okay. Take off and go and just line up right along the inside edge of that toe. I always like to do the open side of my handle first. So I'll do the side that has the two edges. And 
and then I'll flip it over and I will top stitch the other side. I like to go like I started on this side and went down and then I came back up and started on the same side. I like to go in the same direction. Um, that way we don't run the risk that there's a diagonal pull by sewing opposite directions. But honestly, it's not very fussy. If you, if you went the other way, I don't think it would be a crisis. All right, and ta-da! We have our handle, and in the wonders of video land, we have our second handle. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to take it, and we're going to figure out where we want these handles to be. So we know we want to have them on the sides. We do not want to have them on the gussets <laughs> because if you do the gussets, it'll fold your bag up. So I'm going to fold and find my center point to the panel. And I'm going to take a handle and I'm going to line up about two or three inches to the side of that. You can take, we're going to use this, uh, uh, point turner from to do the bottom of the bag in a second here but you it also has a little cute little um, ruler so you can use that of course it's super important that you find the center again I was going to be one of those you know slap happy people that just goes ahead and puts it on because I'm getting a reputation for being a little bit OCD. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here my sister who teases me about it gives me a ruler. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got that going on. And we want to make sure that we're not flipping our handle. So if we line up on either edge, it doesn't make any difference. If we go on that outer edge, we should be able to go all the way around on that outer edge again. Okay, that way we don't have a twist in our handle. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the clip. So the first side I needed to measure. The second side, I can just use the first side to line up. So we'll come in. We'll line up the handle here. And then we'll use the second side to line up there. And then let's do a quick check to make sure we're on the outside. I feel like that's twisted, Pam. Let's do that. Now I'm really twisted. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go like this. Let's go all the way and all the way back yeah. up. There we go. That that's looks better. better. Always better to check these things while it's open and not sewn in already. All right, so we've got our handles all clipped in. I like to sew my handles on twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it on right now. And then when I put my lining on, it will get sewn on a second time. Uh, because once again, that's usually what um, will end up breaking down first. And I don't know about uh, anybody in video land, but um, I often uh, really challenge the tensile strength of my bag. <laughs> um, put a few more things in there than I should, a few more books, etc. All right, so nice and strong there. And then let's flip her over and let's go ahead and get those on. Now, you might look at this and go, yeah, but your handles are going the wrong way. We are, they are going the wrong way at the present time, but when we flip this around, we will end up flipping those upward. So once they're sewn in. Can you push that bit down? That there down. you go, thank Better you. Better there. And so we'll come in and we'll stitch our last one. So what will happen on these is right now they're in the down position, but eventually they will flip to be in the up position. Cool. Okay. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to take and we need to flip around our bag. But before I get too far with that, I like to come in while I don't have a lining 
and I like to poke out the corners of the gusset. So you can see how that when you flip them, they have like a little divot there. We're gonna take the point turner and we're just gonna put that point in there and press those out. Super easy to do it right now, less easy to do it when you have your lining. So we've got that going on there. And take the time to do an actual point turner as opposed to your uh, scissors because um, scissors make holes in bags. <laughs> she saw me the last time I did this, huh? All right, so we're gonna tuck this back. Now I'm not flipping out those corners, I'm just kind of letting them be, but I'm gonna flip it back in so I've got the right side of the bag to the inside. Make sure you shove those handles back in there. So this is what your bag should look like when you're doing your lining. Now the lining I've already prepped because it is exactly the same steps as doing uh, the bag initially. So you had your two 16 inch squares, you sewed your three gussing pieces together, you sew down around uh, the first side. When you sew down the second side, the only thing that is different is at the bottom, you're gonna leave a little opening because that's how we're gonna flip this bag around. Okay, so I sewed the gusset, I stopped, did a little back tack, hopped about six inches, did a back tack, and then sewed the rest of it up. And if they didn't want to do it at the bottom, was could a side work? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, anywhere you'd like. I like to do it at the bottom because um, you can't really see, you, it's usually covered by stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to have your bag inside out, and you want to have your lining right side out. Okay. We're gonna then take the bag and we're gonna place the bag, the lining inside the bag. The seams that we're going to line up are going to be the gusset seams. So I'm gonna grab a hold of my gusset here and I'm gonna go ahead and throw a clip on there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. And we're going to do the same thing over here. So those are looking nice and lined up. All right. Can we just see that in the thing? Mm-hmm. Can you see that? So you've got the two seams and we've got that lined up. Got it. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to kind of hold the bag and we want to pull on it and we wanna check it out and see if one piece is bigger than the other. Because even though we did a 16 inch square for both of them, it is inevitable that one of the two pieces is gonna be larger. Typically, it's going to be the lining because we didn't fuse the fusible fleece to the lining. So you can see that I have like a little pooch going on with my lining. So this is, this is fine, we don't need to take it apart and redo the lining. What we do need to do is we need to set our machine up to use our free arm. So I'm gonna push the cabinet here, we're gonna raise this up, so we've got that going there. The rule of thumb for all sewing is if you have a larger piece, it is always going to be on the bottom. So how you remember that is I always sew with a big bottom. <laughs> So I like to line up on one of the gusset seams to get started. So we'll tuck that under. Okay, get that going along. And I'm gonna grab about halfway and I'm gonna let the lining bag a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and start stitching. And so really the only thing that you need to do is you need to take your other hand and you need to tuck it in to keep, keep those, line, those edges lined up. So we'll go along, we'll stitch through the same stitching as our handle. I'll grab a little further along. And once again, you could totally clip this, but it's a quick bag and it's super easy to do. So by the time I get to my other gusset seam, the magic has happened. So we come along, I get rid of that clip, and the feed dog has eased in my gusset, my lining, excuse me. So now we're gonna go over the gusset bit, and the gusset bit 
wasn't baggy at all. So we'll come to the other seam. We'll come to our other side. And now we'll have it a little bit bigger on the bottom. And we'll just gently work our way. So I'm kind of holding back on the top one and I'm letting the bottom one relax, but I'm not letting the bottom one get out of control. If I just kind of let it lay, it'll go this way or this way and I won't catch it or I'll catch it too much. So just kind of let it be relaxed and we work our way around. And assuming that your measurements were correct, uh, when you cut out your squares, you, um, you know, usually it's about a half an inch to pull in. So by the time you get to the other side, you'll have that taken care of. Okay, we're now at our gusset again. Okay, and then all we need to do is do our last little bit. To the gusset. Yay! All right, so now we have that done. I do want to go around on the inside and just make sure that I caught all of my lining. I don't want to flip it around and then find a hole and have to flip it back. Got it. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go inside. We're going to find the hole in our lining. We're going to put our hand and grab the bottom of the bag, and we're going to pull it all the way through. How big of a hole would you tend to do? About six inches. About six if inches. If you do less than that, of course, you don't have as big an opening to close, but with the fusible fleece, it becomes a little difficult to get the, okay. um, get the bag burst. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're looking really good. We're going to head over to the ironing board and we're going to give this a quick press. Okay, so what I would like is I would like the lining to be a little bit to the back of the bag, to the inside of the bag. So in other words, I want to see a tiny little bit of my outside of the bag showing. Um, I don't want the lining peekabooing out, although this lining is ultra cute, so it wouldn't be any big deal. So we'll give that a quick press, and we'll just work our way around the bag. Sorry about that. I obviously run my iron right-handed. Surprise, surprise. And usually in the ironing process is when I decide whether I'm top stitching the top of the bag. If the bag wants to fold back out on itself, then I'll go ahead and I'll do a top stitch. This one seems to be behaving itself once I press it. So I probably won't need to do much, do any stitching. looking pretty good. So uh, I think we probably want to go ahead and do the stitching. So here's the thing. I've got green thread both top and bottom. I want to go ahead and I want to change my bobbin thread because I'm going to be top stitching from the outside of the um, bag. I'm going to change my bobbin thread to a white thread to match my lining. So I get a nice pretty looking inside. Okay. 
and then we're going to come in and we're going to lengthen up our stitch length. So normally I'm at two and a half when I'm doing my um, seams. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go for uh, about a three and a half. And I'm going to do a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to come in, run it along the edge of the foot. And once again, remember that lining was a little bit larger than my outside bag. So once again, I'm obeying that rule of taking and putting the bigger piece on the bottom. But taking the time to press it before you do your top stitching makes this super easy to do. And what's interesting is when I went over my handle, I caught the bottom of my handle. So my handles have now been sewn three times. So that handle should never come apart. And you'll have a, a couple of kind of thicker seams when you come over those gusset pieces. Don't worry, just kind of give a little helping hand. And we are back to the beginning. And I'm definitely happier with it top stitched. It looks so much prettier with the top stitching. It on is. All right. Last thing to finish up this cute little tote bag is we need to take and we need to finish up the bottom hole. So we're going to take the two pieces of fabric. We're going to tuck them in about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to throw a couple of little clips on it to hold it in place. So we've got those on there and then I'm going to take a quick chance. Let me change out my top thread. So I've got white thread both top and bottom. Once again, just me. Nobody else is going to know this. You could do it with a green thread. All right, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew that closed. So what we want to be doing is we want to be stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So we did the eighth of an inch already. We know where uh, the inside edge of the toe is because we did that for our handles. So we're going to come in, do a little back tack on this just to make sure it stays closed. Particularly if you're going to use it as a beach bag, you don't want, you know sand going into the inside and we'll line up get those edges lined up and all the way across our opening I want it to be lined up Pam why isn't it moving there we go perfect do a little back tack and we are done our bag. So I'm going to trim up a little tail here. We're going to tuck the lining back inside the bag. That is adorable. And super, super fast. How, how you, you were looking, you've got the camera. How long did it take to do it? Um, we're coming up to 35 minutes. Nice. How cute is that? That's adorable. So I hope you enjoyed uh, doing this pattern. Um, the, the measurements, you can just go back to the beginning and uh, do them from the video. But basically 16 inch squares, four by 16 inch side panels, and four by 24 handles. Uh, and hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.